Hello! Welcome to Teach Me Maths. My name is Jonathan Hicks and we're doing T-tests. In particular, this is the one sample T-test. Now, if you look at the T-test overview video, I've explained the different kinds of T-tests and given you the concepts generally of how a T-test works. In this video, I'm just going to do a calculation for a one sample T-test and explain exactly how you um, get the numbers and use the table, the T-table, to draw a conclusion. So, my example I've chosen here is the heights of basketball players. So imagine you are the coach of a basketball team, a state basketball team, let's say, and recently things have not been going well. You just keep losing game after game after game, and you start to think there's some underlying problem here. It's clearly not your coaching, which is impeccable. And after a while, you just start to think that maybe my players are just too short. The super tall players and all the other teams keep slapping them down and they never seem to score. So you start to do some statistical analysis on, your, on the heights of your basketball players and then you can compare them with the mean, the average heights of all the other basketball players to see if they really are shorter than average. So before we look at the data we need some hypotheses. So as before we need the null hypothesis H0 and the null hypothesis always is the one that says there's no difference or there's no change um, from what you'd expect. So in this case, if we're talking about the heights of the basketball players on your team, we're going to say that their height is the same as the mean. So there's no difference between the heights of your basketball players and the heights of all the other basketball players. H1 though the alternative hypothesis in this case, you think that your players are not only different from the mean, but they're actually shorter than the mean. Okay? So the alternative hypothesis here is that your players are shorter than average. That's what we're going to try and prove here. This is as the coach, you need some kind of excuse as to why your team keeps losing. So we're going to try and prove that it's because they're shorter than average. All right, so let's have a look at the data. So here we go. These are the heights in centimetres of 20 different players. These are the 20 players that you've been using on your team. And you're thinking that they're shorter than average. Now, I mean, you can see that there is a spread of heights there. And they're basketball players, so they're pretty tall you're just thinking maybe they're shorter than the average basketball player. So we're going to do a t-test on this data to try and figure out if they really are shorter than average. Okay, now let me explain, if we just clear that, for a one sample t-test, the formula you use to work out your t-value is a bit different from the paired and unpaired t-statistics that you use. So let me write that up here. This time the t-value we're going to be calculating is x bar, which is the mean of your sample. So my 20 basketball players that I've got, we're going to be working out the average height of those players, and that's going to be x bar. You then take away from that mu. Now, mu is a Greek letter, and in statistics it often represents the mean or the average, but this is the population mean. So this is the mean, the average of all the basketball players in the entire league, let's say. So you're comparing your mean from your particular um, team of basketball players with the mean for the whole lot. And then we're going to be dividing this. Remember the t-value in general is the difference between the means divided by the variance. It's the difference between the variance of the samples, if you like. So in this case, um, it's s, the standard deviation, of your particular team again, so I'll be working out the standard deviation of your 20 basketball players, and that's divided by the square root of n, which is the number of data points in your sample, so in this case it's the number of basketball players on my team. So that's the t statistic for a one sample test. Now, I've already, I won't go through the calculations of how you work out mean and standard devi deviation, I'm assuming you already know how to do that. So for our data, for our basketball players, we've got a mean x bar to 
turns out to be 197 centimetres. Mu, when you do a bit of research and you look at all the players in the league, you discover that the average of all the players is 200 centimetres. So it does look like your players are shorter than average. You know, the average height of your players is 197, but the average across the league is 200 centimetres. So for that particular sample, it does seem like that they're shorter than average. But the question here, as with all t-tests, is whether or not this is statistically significant. Could they be shorter just by chance, or do you have a problem? Do the players that come from your state all tend to be shorter on average than the players across the whole league? Um, and that's what the t-test will say, whether or not it's just unlucky that your players happen to be shorter, or whether or not there is a definite difference that they are actually shorter on average, the players from your state, let's say. So uh, next up we need standard deviation. So again, if you work out the standard deviation of the heights of the 20 basketball players, it turns out to be 8.3. And then N, the number of samples, in this case is obviously 20, because we've got 20 basketball players. So, when you plug all the numbers in here, into your calculator, I've already done this, and I'm going to stick it over here because I'm going to draw the, um, the distribution and explain how you draw a conclusion based on your t-value. So, the t-value that you get when you show the numbers in here is minus 1.560. So, the fact that it's minus is because your mean is less than the population mean. So that means it is lower than average. But is it low enough to reject the null hypothesis and accept that yes, there is a significant difference in the average of your players compared with the average overall? Or is it just unlucky that these ones just happen to be a bit shorter? All right, so let me draw you the distribution, the t-distribution, and I'll try and explain how you can use your t-value that you calculated to draw a conclusion. So, the t-distribution looks a lot like the normal distribution. It's a little bit sort of fatter at the sides. So, if we have it something like that. Now, a lot of the time you're at the top end here because you're expecting something to be more than average. Yeah? If you're given patients some kind of drug and you're expecting an improvement in their health, then you're generally looking for something to be better than the average. But in this case, our basketball coach is concerned that his players are shorter than average. So we're actually looking at the bottom end of the t-distribution here. And that's why the t-value is negative. So what we're saying is that if 95% are here, then 5% would end up in the tail. Now a couple of things to mention about this. In order for something to be significant and not just down to sort of unlucky chance as it were, then the value we usually consider is the 95% level. So if your T value is more than 95%, i.e. if you can be down in this region here, so that less than 5% um, of the distribution is here, then that will be statistically significant and you could actually reject the null hypothesis. Um, in general, I should say, what this means is if you had a t-value here, let's say, that was in this thing, that would mean that there would be a less than a 5% chance of getting such an extreme value by chance. That's what the distribution tells you. But if you had a value that was here, then, you know, it might be, let's say there were 30% of it on this side, then there's a 30% chance that you just got that value by luck. And that's fairly easy to do, yeah? 30% chance of getting something is going to happen quite a bit. But if we can get it down to 5% chance of getting that, such an extreme value, then that is far less likely. And generally that's the threshold. So you might want to be more confident and go for a 99% test, but in general we always at least start with a 95% test. And if you can prove that, you can reject the null hypothesis at the 95% level, and then you might go to the 99% and see if you can get that one as well. 
All right, let's do the calculation and then hopefully it'll make a bit more sense. So, the critical value here that would give us 5% down here and 95% in the rest of the distribution, we need to read off the table. So, if we have a look at the uh, T table, there it is. Now, as I said, we want the 95%. Now, this is a one-tailed test because if you remember from the distribution, we're looking on the left-hand side. We only want the basketball players who are shorter than average. We're not looking for just a change. We know they're not going to be potentially taller. We're just looking to see if they're going to be shorter. So there's only one tail we need to worry about. So if you look along the top there, along the one tail thing, we're looking for the 0.95 level. That would be the T value. Um, so the amount in the one tail the amount that corresponds to 95% would be 0.05, okay? Let me just rewrite that slightly more clearly. So the 0.05 value at the top is where we start. We read down until you get to the number of degrees of freedom. Now the number of degrees of freedom for a one sample t-test is just n minus one. n is the number of samples again. So in this case, 20 minus 1 means the degrees of freedom is 19. So if we look down the left-hand side till we get to 19, and as I say, read from the 0.05 for the one-tailed test, the 95% level, we get down to 1.729, I think that is. So that's the critical value. So let's go back to our uh, distribution again. Now, in theory, 1.729, if I make, if we forget about that for a minute and we just look at this end, 1.729 would be here. If we're going the other way, this is actually minus 1.729. So because it's a one-tailed one t-test, it doesn't actually matter which way you go. This is the values, when you read the values off the table, they always assume you're going to be looking for something bigger. But if you want something that's going to be on the smaller end, you just make them all negative, yeah, because you're going the other direction. So, although it says 1.729, we're just going to go with minus 1.729, which will correspond with our T value here, which is negative as well, because we want it to be more negative, if you like, less than the critical value here to get into that 5% level where you can actually draw a conclusion. So then we compare our T value is the important bit with the critical value. So any T value that's less than minus 1.729 would mean you're into this 5% region. So 95% of the distribution would be here and in that case you can reject your null hypothesis. Yep. Anything less than 1.729 would be an extreme T value. It means there's a significant difference between your mean the average height of your basketball players, and the population mean, the basketball players in general. But if we compare our T value, it's only minus 1.560. Now remember, negative values are going to get bigger. As you go in this direction, they're going to become more negative. So 1.560 might only be here, let's say. Minus 1.560. So I'm afraid this value is not bigger it's not more negative than the critical T value that we read off the table. So you can't conclude that your basketball players are shorter than average. The mean is less than average, but that's not statistically significant. It's just unlucky. And next year, when you have some different players, maybe you may well find that your mean um, height is back to the average or even taller than average. So in this case, we have to accept the null hypothesis. We can't reject it. We have to stay with that. On average, there is no difference in your height between your basketball players and the population mean. And I'm afraid it probably is down to your coaching after all. So that's how you calculate the one sample t-test. Again, it's slightly different how you work out the t-value, but you just compare it with the table. Obviously, if you're expecting something to be bigger than average, you'd be going in this direction. But if it's less, it's going to be a negative value and you just flip it around. But it's the same critical value you just stick a minus sign in front and you go in that way. My name is Jonathan Hicks and you're watching Teach Me Maths.